I'm biohacker health coach Joe Baines and I want to talk to you about my first ever seminar. Uh, so this at uh, this time I was this was 2014. I was living in Switzerland. I was married. I hated my my whole life. I hated my job, I hated my my marriage, everything, you know, like I hate the whole thing. I was depressed. Uh, I was eating way too much. I was eating like five meals a day and still hungry. I was, you know, and my emotions were going up and down, up and down like a yo-yo. So my energy levels would go up and down during the day. My emotions, everything, it was a complete mess. And I remember even now thinking, God, this is not how we're meant to live. This cannot be how we human beings are meant to live. We are not supposed to go through this this chaos, right? So <clears throat> then I came across this seminar, uh, the uh, the landing page, the sales page for Millionaire Mind Intensive, and I read through the the blurb on it, you know, and uh, you know the, what what it offered, and it seemed to offer everything I needed. Like it was like it was it was it was um, it was promising to solve all my problems and had all my problems listed on there like all of them i was like oh my god this this seminar has been designed specifically for me so i booked the the uh and i, I think it was like a couple of weeks away so i booked some time off work it was a long weekend i booked uh i booked the seminar i paid 200 uh, euros i think it was it was in uh it was in uh, munich in Germany, uh, and then I booked my train, everything, right? I booked the Airbnb there, the whole works. Paid the 200 euros, everything. And at that time, in 2014, uh, Million in Mind Intensive, created by T. Harv Hacker, um, it came with a free questionnaire, which is about six, seven pages, quite a detailed thing. And I sat down, at home and I went through that it took me like four five six hours or something like that a long time to answer all these questions you know and it was detailed and I didn't want to miss a single detail so I went through this you know with a fine tooth comb and then I printed a second copy out as well and then on the train to Munich from Basel it was like a six or seven hour train journey on the train, I found myself a cabin um, where nobody was sitting in there and had a table in there, there was a big desk in there. So I got to that desk, closed the door behind me. I pulled out the uh, the second sheet of questionnaires, you know, the, the six questions again. And then the entire journey all the way to Munich, I redid all the questions in there, you know, like with a fine tooth comb, spent the whole time. So I did the pre-questions um, four to six hours long altogether, twice, right? And I got to this seminar. This is my first seminar ever. And I'd always believed seminars were too expensive. Um, they were run by con artists, and they're just trying to rip you off. And uh, But I was desperate. So I was like, okay, I'm going to overlook that bit. Uh, so I got to the seminar and I was like, I'm going to squeeze every ounce I can out of this seminar. I'm not doing lunches. I'm not doing dinners. I'm not doing coffees. I'm going to be in that room. I'm going to squeeze everything out of this seminar. So I got to the seminar and I basically engaged. There was about 600 people there um, before the seminar even started. I had engaged about 200 other people. I, they actually thought I was the speaker um, because I was just hitting on everybody, everybody there. Like I was just like boom, 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 after one after the other, talking to everybody, saying hello to everybody, messing around with people. I was like, I am here. I'm here to work. I'm here to learn. This is going to change my life. <clears throat> and so for the whole three days, I would turn up several hours before the doors open so if they said the doors open at eight i'd be there at seven and if the sem with when if the seminar finished at seven in the evening or eight in the evening 
I would stay there talk, talking to people, networking until 10, 11 o'clock at night. So I was there full, full on, right? And it was mind blowing. Like it was so full on that it just blew my mind. And it, it highlighted loads of problems in my thinking, in my behavior, in my beliefs, everything. So anyway, at the end of it, they give you this 90 day workbook, which you take away and you you do a page a day. And in, on each page, there's about eight, 10 things they want you to do one after the other. And it's supposed to take about an hour, right? So what, I got this book home and I would do this each page twice. So I would leave early to go to work. And then on the way to work, um, there was a, I would walk across like a motorway thing and uh, there was a bridge going across it, just a pedestrian bridge <laughs> in Basel. <clears throat> and so and nobody used it, especially in the morning. So I used to walk across this bridge on the other side and it's quite noisy. So I would do all the exercises. A lot of them were jumping up and down, shouting and incantations and all kinds of stuff, right? So I would do them for the, for the whole hour. Uh, before I got to work and then when I finished work which would be six seven eight in the evening on the way home before I got got to my house again at this same point on the bridge I would do the the whole ex the whole hour again so I would do each day twice one in the morning one in the evening and the the first week I did this at the end of the first week I could feel shifts in my head, things had changed, but I didn't know what they were, right? I just couldn't figure it out, but I could feel something change, changing in me. And I was all right, just keep going, keep going. And so then the second week, twice a day, I was doing this twice a day. At the end of the second week, again, I felt things moving in me, shifting, but I didn't know what they were. I couldn't figure out what they were, but I was like, no, I'm just going to keep going. It's going to keep going. Third week, kept going. Again, I felt differences, but I didn't know what they were. Fourth week, again, and I think it was the fifth or the sixth week, something like that. I can't remember now. Um, but I woke up one day, boom. Everything changed. Like my whole world changed. Like all the decisions making became really simple. It was like I had changed completely. And by me changing, my world around me also shifted. I looked at things from a completely different perspective. The decisions I was finding really hard to make and that the things that where I didn't have clarity, I had now had clarity. And but what I couldn't understand anymore was why I was, uh, I was struggling before. Do you know, like, it didn't make sense to me why I had all those problems because there weren't problems. There were molehills. I just turned them into, into mountains. But the first one was um, I was trying to leave my wife because, you know, it was, a, it was a shit marriage. Didn't want to be in it. Still don't want to be in it, right? Um, and um, it was as sim simple as it's just my brain went, what's the big deal? Just, just go, up, go book your flights, buy a large suitcase, come home, fill it, with the essentials, go to the airport, jump on the plane, job done, right? And you don't like your job, just go in, resign, job done. Whew. It was like, it was like, it wasn't even a decision anymore. It was like, well, this is what you need to do. Just do it, just do it, you know? And I just did it. So I went to work um, and I uh, told my boss uh, that like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm resigning and he went, why is it taking you so long? I've been expecting you for the last couple of weeks to come and say you're resigning because, you know, I could see it. I thought, like, okay, that's interesting. Um, and then I booked uh, flights to the Far East, a three-month trip to the Far East. Uh, and I told my uh, now ex-wife that I'm, um, I'm going, I need a break, you know, from the job, from everything. And I'm going traveling for, for three months and uh, I'll be back. No, I wasn't coming back, but that was where I told her. Anyway, so I um, 
Um, yeah, so I booked my flights, uh, everything, boom. For a very like biggest suitcase I could find my hands on. And also the other thing I did <laughs> was um, I changed all my cards, my bank details to my brother's house. Like, I didn't buy any, any letters of mine of any importance coming there. Uh, so I just moved everything to his house. And um, my ex-wife found out, you know, because she got one of the letters saying, you've changed your address. And she hit the roof like for days. Uh, she was mental anyway. So, um, so to the airport, I'm telling you, going to the airport with my really heavy suitcase, it felt like... You know, like somebody coming out of prison. You know, when uh, you see in the movies, somebody's coming out of prison, they've done 20 years or whatever. I did 15, all right? Um, coming out of prison, it's like it was like that. It was like coming out of prison. Going to the airport was like walking uh, to the prison, the, uh, the exit gate inside the prison, you know, with my suitcase and all my things. And uh, I just, yeah, I didn't look back. So, and that's when I got hooked on um, um, doing um, seminars because I was like, wow, the power of these seminars. I'd been struggling for, with this issue for like 10 years. And this seminar shifted it completely within a month. You know, so that's how powerful it is. But if I hadn't done the work, the most important thing was the work. I did the work. Yeah, people. That's the most important bit. When I went to that seminar, the pre-questionnaire, I did it twice because I was desperate. At the seminar, I wasn't messing around. I wasn't going for lunches. I wasn't going for dinners. I wasn't going for coffees. I was in the room. I was in the room taking notes, participating 1,000%. Like I was, boom, there. And then when I got home, the workbook, it became my Bible. It became my religious text. I would do that twice a day, and it was like a religion, you know? So if you want change, you've got to put the effort in. You have to put the, otherwise it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. All right, that's my um, MMI experience, and it just blew my world, okay? So if you want some change like that, what MMI does, it removes or uh, eliminates a lot of your uh, limiting beliefs around finance, wealth, money, that kind of stuff. And so if you want change, MMI is awesome and it's almost free or very little money, but you have to put the effort in. You have to put the work in. It's the work afterwards. During the seminar, don't be going for coffee breaks, all right? Oh, I'd like a coffee. Oh, look, I'm hungry. No, you stay in the room and you participate full out. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. That's my, uh, that's my take. Enjoy.